Greetings, contaminated survivors, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to RimWorld Zed City. Episode 33, Unexpected Mechanics. Do they have a fail chance? I don't think so. And can anyone be immune? No. Well, like, zombies are immune, I guess. So, okay, take that back. Zombies are immune. But, uh... But other than the zombies, no, we're, there's no immunity. Only the dead are immune from zombieisms. Okay, we are supposed to be at like zero threat scale. Um, doesn't feel like it. Feels like I'm being heavily assaulted. So Stormguard, I know you just recovered from being bit, but I'm sending you back down here. We're definitely not, uh, uh, let's say, out of the woods yet. There's still a lot of zombies around, and I would love to be able to turn them into serums if given the opportunity. Uh, Fangface should be over his... Yes. Okay, so Fangface is over his um, addiction. So I'm going to get rid of the old man addict. Uh, policy and allow him to consume psychic tea again, provided he does it responsibly. I hope. And let's go ahead with. I don't have my bathrooms built yet. Uh. But in a second here, I'll put up a poll about uh, about a new goal. I just I just want to get a little bit more of the bathrooms built. So I have a lot of slate blocks, so we'll go with slate in these always. And then I'll do wood for the bathrooms themselves. Sounds I would have done mosaic, but I just can't afford it. No carpet. We don't have fabric. Oh, they're throwing a party. Well, I'll be good for morale. Kind of a gross room, though. So we're going to continue with the wooden latrine composting toilets in the bathroom, uh, just because we still need the the fuel, the biosolids, and for chem fuel. At some point, I mean, I think just because we want fertilizer, I don't think we're ever going to do non-composting toilets. It doesn't it doesn't make sense in our in our case, uh, but we'll get better showers and and to uh, maybe bathtubs and things in there. Trying to make them nicer and having multiples so that we have multiple people going to the bathroom. So Fangface and Exar, let's get you out on the docks again and I'm going to make a push to try to get some serums here in a second. I wouldn't mind having stockpiled serum for cases of an emergency. So in here, we'll go with, uh, I have a lot of wood, don't I? All right. Some wooden showers. And then...
I'm just going to do sink basins. Keep it very simple. Oh, the other thing is I don't want to actually plumb the toilets, so I have to be careful about how I path my plumbing. Because the toilets shouldn't be plumbed, as then they'll not become uh, composting toilets. They'll become sewer toilets. A little counterproductive to what we want. And yeah, this water fountain, uh, I'm going to leave in because it's a way for them to fulfill their thirst easily. But I might move physically where it's located to like down here or something. Any warm up in the relationship? Uh, I mean, yeah, a little bit. A lot of rebuffing and a lot of failed romance. So they're interested in one another. They're just bad at flirting. I feel that. I can relate a little. <laughs> uh, in terms of attracting zombies, I'm not sure. I know that bows don't attract zombies, but I was under the assumption... And I could be wrong about this, but it was under the assumption that um, all other firearms had the same zombie attraction uh, mechanics. That miniguns weren't any more effective or less effective. But I could be wrong about that. I just know that bows are silent and don't attract. But that's all I know. They're just out of practice? Yeah, I think that's fair. Alright, let's try this again. Redfield, Zeusin, uh, you are guys going to be close to base. We'll have to do this uh, quickly because I don't want them to get um, disgustingly uh, infected as a result. Stormguard, you stand guard and try not to get bit this time. Oh, she's going out there by herself. So close to base. Ever do some repair. I think Redfield... Oh, why are you... Wait, why are you researching? That's weird. Go extract. Now Redfield's actually doing extractions. Uh, Stormguard, I'm going to have you do them too. Just, um, can you eat on your feet? I don't want you running all over the dinner table. I know, without a... Eating without a table. Uh, why is time slowing down? I don't see any zombies around them, so I'm just going to ignore it. Why is time slowing down? Who's in peril? No one? So strange. Oh, maybe it's because they're getting really... Nah. It's not the contamination. I mean, the contamination's building up, and they're not having a good time. Uh, but I'm keeping an eye on it. So let's get Redfield out of there. Oh. So here's the thing. Contamination was just patched in as a mechanic uh, since the last time I played. And I was not aware of how absolutely ridiculous it was. Because uh, he went from, like, mild to instantly dead rather quickly. Um... 
don't really know what to do about that. Because, yeah, he was at, like, 70% total effectiveness and then went to zero um, kind of kind of unpredictably quick. So here's the thing. I don't normally like safe scumming, but because I hadn't played uh, Zombieland since last week and the contamination was... There was just a little... Um, the, the patch notes for it were one line, which was like, contamination now affects colonists. There wasn't a lot of warning as to how it did. Not to say that Brains is wrong to have minimalistic patch notes. The fact that he has patch notes at all um, is nice. But uh, but obviously I don't have any like Resmex serum stockpiled, which would be the only way to bring them back. So I'm going to have a quick, should I save scum? Um, so while you vote on that, because it doesn't make sense to continue playing as that's up. Uh, so here's the contamination. And let's read it. Contamination is a late game challenge that introduces a persistent and spreading hazard to your colony. Originating from various sources like deep drilling and traded items, it transfers between objects, colonists, and the environment. The further your colonist colony grows and the more you manage contamination, uh, the more you need to manage contamination to keep your colonists safe. Uh, to monitor contamination levels, turn on the overlay in the bottom right corner buttons, resulting in the inspector, Details, dialogue, and mouse over ground info, where you will find a percentage indicating the contamination uh, level of an object, cell, or pawn in question. Uh, so it doesn't really tell you how to deal with it, however. Um, but that is information about contamination. And then somewhere in here, I think, is a checkbox of contamination effects uh, colonists, maybe? I think? Somewhere? I could be wrong about that. No, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but it looks like you guys... Um, I can just conclude that. That's the most one-sided I've ever seen anything uh, that I should save scum. So, do very small batches out here. The other thing I wonder is... If there's clothing that protects from contamination. Because, because as you may have noticed, um, the... There, it's a little light on details about how to handle contamination. But it's caused by touching and being exposed to contaminated things and places. But that's all it really says in the description. So last I checked, from what I know, contamination is one of those things where um, you can clean up contaminated areas with fire. And that obviously doesn't really work that effectively by the lake shore. Uh, so that's why I've been doing the uh, moisture pumps to try to dry out the things that are wet so that I can actually co clear contamination through fire. Um, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. So this is the contaminated area. There's some contamination here. Very, very light contamination here. And then as we... Um, as we get deeper into where all the zombies have died, the contamination gets worse, obviously. So, here's the contamination overlay. If we zoom out, you can see where it's sort of heat mapped. Um, which further maybe cements the need for more moisture pumps so that we can do fiery purge burns of the area and uh, lower the contamination. Now that you see the threat that it truly, now that I see the threat that it can truly uh, to impose. Okay, we have a new research project. So with advanced fabrication open, um, that opens up a lot of options for us. And uh, well, let's see. So for advanced fabrication, now that we can actually make advanced components, we can consider recon armor, pulse uh, pulse guns, or I'm going to call them charge guns, or biomics. So, there we go for next research project. Big old list. Nearly blocks me out. You guys can vote on that. And while you vote on that, I will queue up... Uh, Mm, Starfleet basics, something that isn't... Or no, Crypto Sleep Caskets. 
something that's not on the list. It's going to be a little challenging to get enough extract, uh, given how dangerous it is to be around those corpses. But, you know, that's part of the challenge. And here we go. We have um, two new bathrooms. They're doll. Uh, but, you know, this is fine. And I'm going to break down the old one. We'll move this sink. This water bubbler. Basic fountain here. And we can reclaim a little bit more of this area. Uh, so that this room becomes larger and hopefully nicer as a result. I'm going to stop doing fecal sludge to chem fuel uh, so that we can do it for fertilizer. Is there any anti-contamination research? No, that I know of, no. Apart from using moisture pump to clean up the um, clean up the lakefront. That would be the, the only thing that would help me in this case, I think. Is the exhaust of the kitchen freezer uh, roofed? No. It's a chimney. The zombies are a mod, and mod details are there, if you're wondering. And we do have a nice lull of threat in about three days. Uh, so it might be possible, and I'll be polling about priorities here in a second. It might be possible for us to go out on an outside excursion soon. And I'm just trying to wrap up. So we do have the... Oh, what did I do? Must have screwed up plumbing. Yeah, I screwed up plumbing. Oh, and I built a copy of this uh, basin, not a new one. Okay, so the bathrooms are done for now. We've got showers, sinks, toilets, uh, enough hot water for them. I think. Uh, yeah. Let's add a little bit more hot water. But uh, yeah, enough hot water for everything. And then I am reorganizing the storage here. To be more optimized. Which will take me a minute, but uh, we'll get it done. And if you want to check if burning contamination will help clean it, uh, let's actually run that experiment, shall we? I'll do a small-scale test here, where I put down some wooden paneling and then torch it. Because that's how it worked um, when this series started, but um, but the the mod had has changed since then. So as you can see, there is contamination, really low levels of contamination, but there is some uh, background contamination here in our um, in our base. Just you know, things that are like brought in on on boot heels and the like, which is relatively normal and not exactly a threat to us. As you can see, it's not, um, it's not, uh, gonna get us, you know, harmed much at all. But here we go. Here's a little contamination test and you guys want bionics. So let's Pivot over to Bionics. Uh, for next colony project, I'll have you guys vote. So I'm going to remove this area. F oh, it's not a home zone anyway. Should have been, <laughs> but I don't have it. And we'll just see if uh, contamination drops from light to zero in this spot as a result of torching the, uh, the 
the ground. That's the theory, at least. Putting our theories to the test. Unroof the fire room? Uh, yeah. It got a little hotter than I thought it would. So, I'm not going to so much unroof it as I'm just going to remove one door so that it's not, uh, an internal area. So that the, the wooden walls don't randomly combust. Alright, uh, the torching's been done, and the area is now clear of contamination, as you can see. It was lightly contaminated, and now it's zero. So, cleaning by fire works. Good to know. I mean, that's what I thought the whole time, but it's good to have a confirmation. Pristine ruins found nearby. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Back to base. We've been mining stuff out and then stone cutting, so I'm hoping that that pays off. Uh, looks like a power. Yeah, we haven't been running off our batteries. Good job, me. All right, these two need to go to sleep. They're past their bedtime, or yeah, past their bedtime. Redfield's trying to hold off everyone. Zeusin is researching. And our next priority is going to be a mix of moisture pumps and ruin delving. Which is good, because we just got a pristine ruin. So, build more pumps and explore a ruin. Okay, uh, let's explore the ruin with Pooker. I am going to load... Package of survival meals and 150 camp fuel. So, time to monitor Redfield's health very closely, and also his safety, because there's zombies nearby. I see uh, works on repairing the moisture pump walls, and then also adding additional moisture pumps. So down here, what we want is the sort of star pattern for this moisture pump. And then, with this moisture pump built, let's actually paint in the radius of this pump. So it's 11 by 7, I think. 7 by 13? Does that sound... Does that look right? So I can plan out... Okay, yeah, that is right. So I can plan out the next one, too. So that is roughly the relevant radius of that pump. Correct. So then the next pump can go here which cuts off this area nope uh one lower got it so that cleans out this area double check my math correct and then the ne uh, next pump here.
And that should cover most of where the zombie corpses accumulate, I think. Might be worth trying to torch the zombies that are already there. So the, the issue is, um, most of the zombies except for these are on water. So some of these zombies are burn, can burn, but like most of them can't because they are laying in a lake. And that's the whole point of the moisture pumps is like, as long as the corpses rot in a lake, the, the benefit of the lake is negated by the fact that, um, their corpses are non-flammable as a result. So I'll torch what I can. Uh, but then, of course, that means we're not getting serums. So then there's the the cost-benefit of reducing our um, contamination with also not being able to accumulate serums. So there's a constant uh, balance between those two opposing goals. Would they jump the walls surrounding a pump? No, not likely. I mean, it's possible, but for them to jump the walls, there needs to be um, 18 zombies around the spot to be able to jump wall. Uh, also, it might just make sense to have the back of the pump be open. There's not really a reason that the zombies would attack the pump itself. The walls are really just to protect the pump from gunfire. And the gunfire originates from over here, so having it open in the back means that even if they do jump the walls, like, who cares? The walls are to not to protect the pumps from, from zombies. Except for when fire jumps them. What the hell? Okay, hold on. I didn't realize that fire could do that. Uh... Don't burn, baby, don't burn. Yeah, his pump's gone. Shoot. Well, that's gonna be a while for that to expand. Nothing like fire jumping through diagonals. So, alright, that's good to know. So if we take a look at our contamination now, as you can see, it's mostly just um, high contamination along the shoreline, which is non-flammable. So our, our scheduled burn worked uh, as intended. And then the other thing is we're not gonna be able to do burns around where these pumps are, as long as the pumps aren't surrounded by stone. But what we could do is we could do a fire break like this so that the pumps are open, but also protected from fire jumping to them. So this would be the ideal like pump setup here, which is what uh, Guero is working on. And I'll just have to keep an eye on Guero's health as he works. And also if any zombies are trying to munch on him. Uh, yeah, maybe actually, that's a good question. So because it needs to rebuilt, what I could do, well, it's a little late, it's rebuilt. Um, instead, what I could do is build a pump here and here, and then I don't need to build any of this. So I'm going to do that. I'll just, um, or alternatively... So the, the other constraint here is I don't want the pump to block this door. This door is obviously, um, so let me, let me rework what I'm working on anyway. This, this door is, um, is a high traffic area. So I want the pumps to freely be able to fire on this door without it being blocked in any way. So I think what I'll do is I'll have, um, I'll have a pump here. And then I'll just build a bridge to dry this spot up.
So that's my first pump. And that cleans everything up until this point. So everything here over is covered by this pump once this pump reaches maximum. Alright, Grail, time to work on that, I guess. I could move the door. Uh, not right now, though. Because if I deconstruct that door right now, I have a whole different problem on my hands. Yeah, there's simply just too many zombies. It's a mass peak influx. For him to do anything like that. I'm using uh, Gora out here because Gora has a melee of 10, so he can uh, successfully block one zombie attack. Okay, excuse me, game. Play by your own damn rules. Here's what pisses... What, did he die of contamination? Oh. Yeah, I know. That's my fault. Really? I feel like... Contam Honestly, at this point, I would say I feel like contamination is a little broken, threat scale-wise. He's been working in a 0 0.08 contamin... I think if I was to take a guess, uh, there's like a bug in Zombieland? Because, like, he's, he's been strictly working in a 0 0.08 contaminated area. He didn't die to this zombie attacking him, as far as I know. Let's look at the logs. No, it chomped him. So, I'm even further con confused. So, so I'll explain why before I save Scum, because that death was BS. So, here's what I'm confused by. There's a zombie damage safe melee limit. So, here... The safe melee limit is 2, which means at level 20, a brawler can take on two zombies at, at once, and the zombies have a 0% chance to damage them. Which means that with Gro's melee skill of 10, literally you can see the example. At melee level 10, one zombie has a, you have a 100% chance to block. So the fact that he... Just had his leg chomped by a zombie when he has a melee skill of 10 makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. None. It just doesn't make sense. Because he died. I'm thinking it's hard to tell because I don't the logs. I can't reverse time, but I think he died to the fact that he was contaminated by the bite from the zombie. Not from build-up working in a contaminated area. I'll know a little bit once this loads. Um, oh, we're, 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 we're pretty far back. Well, we're far back enough that this moisture pump now exists. To my own benefit, I suppose. But yeah, I'm thinking he died as a result. And I, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually save right now. And I'm going to purposely get bit to test that theory. I want to see if bites contaminate. And then I'm just going to load the save again. Yes, so bites contaminate. Confirmed. Got it. So yeah, what happened there was, um, it wasn't that so much that he was working in contaminated area. It's that a bite heavily contaminated him. And he instantly died from the build of that, of that contamination. But the bite should not have contaminated him at all. Because he's a level 10 brawler who's supposed to be able to block attacks from a singular, singular zombie at a 100% chance. I pulled my hair out, but I don't really have hair. So, I don't even know. I don't even know. All I know is, um, I have my moisture pump back, so I apologize for that. I guess I'm just learning the ins and outs of this new game mechanics for better or for worse. And I'm, I'm not going to tamper with the contamination rate. I'm going to leave it as is. Uh, and just work around it. Oh. 
Um, okay, so question. Do we have the pristine ruins still? We don't. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take streamer gets to vote on things and change the priority here to build more pumps and supply mountain home or uh, quest mountain home. So there is a quest here to provide five zombie serums that are at 40%. And uh, we can either do the heal serum, which would cure Fang Face of his uh, dementia, or have Hopkins join. Hopkins is a cave troll. I mean, a geologist. Actually, it's funny. She has creepy breathing, but she has really high social skill. So I guess she'd be good on the phone? Uh, what reward? Heal Serum or Hopkins? I'm not going to consider uh, the Goodwill. I don't really care about Goodwill. So I'll have you vote on that for five minutes. And then that means I need to make, if... We, either, either case, I need to make five serums worth 40% or more. Which is going to be a bit of a struggle. Because that's a lot of serums. But it's, uh... It's... It's a really nice reward. So now I have, uh, now that I've done the save scum for, uh, let's hope the last time, fully understanding the game mechanics, and also not really understanding why, uh, Guerrero couldn't block bites. Maybe he has to be drafted, but even then, I think I just drafted him and he got bit anyway. I don't really, I think that's pro kid. The safe melee limit doesn't seem to be correct. As far as I could tell. And she's still reaching. Yeah, she's researching the correct thing. I'm not taking off feedback about contamination while I play, so uh, don't bother commenting on it. I'm not changing the values this stream. I might consider it after this stream ends, but not during. Changing values while I play and is just not something I, I'm entertaining at this moment. So small batch extractions Get the serums and then get the hell out of the area. It's going to be the way we we have to roll. And I'll just have to Hawkeye watch them make sure that they're not building up deadly amounts. But I feel like as long as we're quick... And, and there also might be a benefit to actually extracting these zombies. I don't know, but like I feel like because their corpses disappear... Uh, the benefit of ex of getting zombie extractions might be that uh, their zombies are their corpses are no longer rotting, and as a result, they're no longer contaminating the area. Uh, also, I just told him to wear the parka. I, I I saw it. Don't worry. All right, so now he's at noticeable, and he needs to leave. God, it's really fast. He went to noticeable to like debilitating levels of contamination instantly. What game? What the hell? The ramp up is unforgiving, is really what it is. It goes from zero to a thousand, like a hundred in an instant, which feels unfair. I mean, it's how it's designed, so now I'm aware, but it feels very hard to, uh, you know, it, it's 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 not like heat stroke. Or toxic buildup or something. It's more like blood loss.
All right, we are going to do for heal serums. I'm going to wait as long as I can to accept that quest. So we have a lot of time to be able to accumulate our serums in time because I it expires in about six days. So I want to accept it as late as possible for the maximum amount of uh, collection time. Grow, hold there. Uh, I'm also really curious. I'm gonna save one more time. I'm really curious about this melee thing. I think the melee is broken, uh, personally. So I have Grow come out here. Okay, so he blocked one. Yeah, what? So he blocks an attack, but he gets 100%, 60% uh, contaminated in one block. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you guys. It's broken. If that's the case, yeah, if that's the case, uh, I'm really surprised it's actually passed a Brains' QA, because he's a pretty prolific modder that does really highly refined mods. Um, so I'm going to report that as a bug, because, like, what is the point of the safe melee limit if you can't melee? That's just... Yeah. That's just, that's anti-fun. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I, I think I think that Brains himself will acknowledge that that's not how it's intended to work and probably patch it out. Because that's, you shouldn't call it safe melee limit if you're just going to kill me anyway. Wasn't the contamination mechanics marked as experimental? Um, ish? I don't think it's actually marked as experimental in here. But good to know I can't let them touch me. Oh, good. Fangface is confused here. Uh, at least he's hungry. I say that because when you are going to dementia, wander. Okay, but he is wandering uh, dangerously in the wrong direction. Uh, Alright, hold up. Where are Change of pace, wall them in. Did I save after the serum quest? Yeah, I have. I already have. I have the serum quest. I saved right before I sent Gora out there to test the contamination problems. Whoa, just in time. I blocked the zombie, but not his rule. Yeah, it just doesn't seem like it's um, designed as intended. It's not working as it probably should. So we have an albino here, noted. We also have a healer. Oh, it actually mouses over them? It says healer zombie. Oh, healer zombie tone 0 0.01 contaminated, but still says healer zombie. And this one says albino, I think, if I mouse it perfectly. Actually, it, uh, yeah, it does. It's one of the things I wish you could just like, yeah, albino zombie Martin. Uh, minor zombie Zold Schultz. Z Schultz. I don't know. Seems like a noise, not a name. What are you? Yeah, what door are you opening? I walled. I walled you off. Welcome back, bang face. They are getting all sorts of pissed. Hey, bang face. Uh, consume your meal, and then grab frag grenades because this is a pretty mightily ridiculous uh, thing going on right now. Yeah. 
they are pissed. Oh my lord. What a horde. I can't even target the ground. I wish there was like a hotkey. If Kathanon, if you're listening, I wish there was a hotkey where you could just be like, don't throw at a target, just throw it at the ground. It's gonna be hard to get serums now. A little bit. Standing on the um, low contaminated zones of the eastern banks of the, the lake are fine. It's the this area which is really not fine. Exart, it's your bedtime. Turn in. And Fake Face, I'll have you turn in too. There's sure no shortage of zombies around. Thank you for tuning in to RimWorld Z City, which originally streamed live on Twitch November 12th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell.